good evening and welcome to the studio this evening anybody else watching thank you for dropping in we do tonight carry on with the blue of the locomotive start at the back and then before I continue any further I'm going to change my glasses better I can see a little bit better now Right, good evening anybody that's watching. Despite the, uh, the the title and the information on screen, if you're not sure what you're looking at, it's a uh, craft which is called Punchcraft, or at least that's what the manufacturer of the tool that I'm using calls it. I'm not sure what the uh, what a, a true craft name would be, but uh, it describes it well enough. What's happening is this needle is pushing, uh, pushing a loop of thread through the fabric to the other side. And it's those loops on the other side which uh, form the, the picture. And it forms it very much like a rug is made. In fact it's a similar technique for rug, uh, both for rug making and industrial make, uh, rug making. Except industrial wise they tend to use um, hundreds of needles not just uh, one.
Good evening anybody that's uh, joined the uh, stream. Welcome to the studio this evening. If there's anybody that's um, watching and doesn't uh, <laughs> doesn't know about the uh, the mallard, which is being referred to in the uh, stream title, in this particular case, it's not a duck. Uh, the mallard is a um, steam locomotive, of which this is uh, an example. Well, this is a, uh, an image of the mallard. It's a steam locomotive from around sort of ni 1960s, and the Mallard holds the steam baseline speed record at about 125 or 126 miles per hour. Chosen 07, good evening, welcome to the studio this evening, nice to see you again. And this blue look, uh, blue, or the blue colour of the engine is uh, just one of the liveries which it's been painted with. It's been green and black, and actually another shade of green of uh, blue in the past as well. But the blue livery is probably the most famous. So it's jammed. And the thread jams up, it uh, stops coming out of the tip of the needle and then um, what happens is you start pulling the loops out as you drag the, uh, drag the thread, it's doing it again. Puffy twiglet! Good evening, welcome to the studio this evening. And you love trains, do you choose? And I said, well, why not? There's some really nice looking uh, locomotives. And often lots of really interesting stories around them as well. I'm guessing also then if you love trains you possibly play um, Train Simulator. And if I remember correctly this uh, particular engine is available in there if you uh, want it to be able to drive it.
What I'm just going to do is find my scissors. And uh, cut off these loops before they uh, start to bother me or they get in my way. Because the loops have a, well, threads have a habit, shall we say, of always managing to put themselves just where you want to see so you can't see because they're in the way. Let's get rid of the one back down here as well. There we go. Um, not sure the answer to well, <laughs> there's two answers to that. I actually, chose number seven. Um, it it already is framed. Um, I mean this this loop uh, um, hoop rather or loop I suppose, but this hoop um, is a very good frame in itself. Um, it you know you, you can hang it. Uh, as a picture using the um, so using this um, well this is this is where the, the you tighten the outer loop against the inner loop to hold things faster but it also acts, acts quite nicely as a hanging uh, position so in terms of uh, framing and hanging this if I want it to do so all I need to do is just trim off the fabric around the outside of the loop um, I'd probably Put a drop, of, well, a drop. Put a um, some fabric glue around the outside just to stop it fraying anymore. Um, to do that, um, but to be honest, um, don't actually know whether I'll um, keep it to long, keep it, put it on display long term or not. Um, I don't um, don't display a lot of my uh, art in the house. I tend to like things um, a little bit uh, uncluttered, shall we say. So I tend not to put a lot of stuff on the walls. Um, so this is just as likely to go into storage and uh, and stay there. I um, enjoy more the process of creating the, the uh, art than I do of looking at it afterwards. Which seems really, really silly for an artist, <laughs> and it's not, it's not, it's not one of, um, you know, every time I see something, I, I see the flaws or the errors in it. Therefore, I don't want to look at it. It's just purely, um, uh, you know, the the bit I enjoy most is creating it. Digital House Party. Hello and welcome. To uh, welcome to my studio. Nice to see you. Thank you for dropping in and thank you for the follow yesterday. By the way, that was most uh, most kind of you. So what you're seeing here is just one of five uh, different crafts that uh, get done. Uh, on this stream uh, and that this is uh, this one again it's called Punchcraft which is probably obvious from the title um, but uh, I also do uh, relief carving scraper board um, 
pyrography and I make uh, jewellery out of um, rings. Uh, chain mail is effectively what it is but I don't make armour. So um, quite a quite a varied uh, stream. I don't, don't do them all at once. <laughs> do them one after the other but uh, generally spend a week or two doing each one in in turn depending on what it, uh, what it is and some things like carving take longer than uh, than other things. That thread is jammed again. Don't know why I've not had any problem in either this or the last uh, uh, last piece. This either this reel or this particular colour. I've had the, the problem with the thread jamming. <laughs> um, well, let's let's just say I, I otherwise probably would have a tendency to get bored doing the same thing uh, time after time. Uh, digital house party, which is why I I like to do a variety of stuff. Uh, it just stops me getting um, getting bored with it. I did uh, I did carving of a dragon just recently and that took a quite a bit of a, a length of time and I was getting a little bit towards the end of it I was getting a little bit of uh, you know what I want to do something different um, if I hadn't actually been so at the time if I hadn't have been so close to finishing that particular piece off I'd have um, left it for a little while and come back to it uh, a, a little bit later But the streaming stuff has uh, has made me do more art, so I'm not uh, displeased with it or anything. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jason. Sometimes actually it can be quite hard to find a subject to do. Uh, I know there's millions and millions and millions of things that you know you could produce art on, and yet by the, by the time when it comes to literally to start a piece, I will sometimes sit for hours thinking, what on earth can I do? I'm looking at a blank sheet of paper because um, quite often I'll start with a blank sheet of paper before I actually transfer to any sort of medium and I'll, I'll just be looking staring at it and going you know what I just don't know what to do and I have lots of ideas and some ideas don't work so well in some mediums um, so they those ideas obviously get put to one side for uh, for a different craft um, but um, yeah, I can just sit there going, oh, I'll have such great ideas, I have no idea how to start, <laughs> something like that. So I'll put that to one side as well. I'm tending to found, find that the best thing to do is uh, the, you know, almost the, whatever's the first thought that comes in my mind, I'm doing that. And whether I can do it or not, we'll find out. Occasionally, you, <coughs> you guys will give me ideas. I think actually it was 3D blog that the the last pyrography piece I did, which was um, Salute to Sunset, which included an elephant and uh, and a giraffe in a sort of African savanna. It was actually 3D blog that suggested the elephant. So.
eventually ended up adding, yeah, adding other stuff as well, not just a pure elephant, but it turned out rather nice. That was a piece I had no idea how to start and just did it. Although this is kind of looks slow, we're actually progressing very fast through this particular piece. In terms of uh, if this was a painting, it probably would, uh, wouldn't be going quite as fast as this. So it's a relatively quick art form. Still not super fast, it's not something that you complete in a couple of hours, something of this size, but... Uh, uh, you can certainly motor with it. Ah, uh, you're going to uni. Second, second year. Oh, that means you've got at least another year. <laughs> I was about to say, you know, it's kind of unusual for people to actually look forward to going to school, but... Um, uh, I kind of know what you mean. I didn't actually ever go to university myself. I went to a technical college and I did it whilst I was at work, so it was a part-time course. But uh, it was kind of nice to get it, to get it but it's kind of nice to start and kind of nice to finish. <laughs> I always ended up, uh, you yeah, know, sort of once you're into the sort of final term it was looking to looking towards the end of the term so you're doing a three year or a, uh, well it could be a two year i guess but a three year four year five year course Just uh, continue this to the end of the line, then I'll cut the thread off and I'll turn it over just to give you guys a view of what it looks like at the moment. Putting the thread off so I don't accidentally pull any of the loops out and have to end up redoing it. Yeah, so that's how what we've done so far. A uh, little bit, a uh, little bit loose in that area. You got to make sure you get the uh, get the loops close enough together. Otherwise, you won't necessarily be able to see it, but it's a little bit um, sparse just in this area here. I'll just have to make sure the next layer that I do is is quite closely. Uh, um, I say stitched, but it's not actually stitching. But sort of, you know, the the quite the loops are placed quite close together, just to uh, pack them in a little bit just in this area here. But there we go. You're doing three years of. Um, Illustration for Reaper, good evening as well, welcome uh, to the studio. Uh, not so far.
<laughs> yep, yeah, I'm just following and unfollowing. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose some people will uh, will study it even if they already have uh, such a uh, a job, but. Uh, What you should call yourself, uh, Fluffy Twiggler, is um, you are an illustrator. You're just an, uh, a beginning illustrator or a um, not quite fully trained illustrator at the moment. You've done some training, so right, I shall carry on. Thank you very much, Digital House Party. When I look on the back, I can see I've spaced the uh, the rows out a little bit too much. That's the only that's that's the the one of the key things about uh, doing this is making sure you get enough loops in an area uh, so that effectively you don't see the white through between the loops you don't see the backing material so that means sort of well essentially it means putting loops about one needle width apart really in all in both directions vertically and horizontally that can sometimes be quite difficult to do especially if you you know being quite fast about it Um, but it's it is something that you can always rectify afterwards. There's no nothing to stop afterwards if I still feel an area has got too few uh, loops in it. I can go in and um, just punch a few extra loops there. Wind chimes. Not hearing any here. Um, we do have some wind well wind chimes so you might just have you might potentially have heard something from this end if it was picked up on the mic but um, I know this mic's sensitive but it's quite a directional mic so I'd, I'd be surprised but not you know it is possible Can't hear any at the moment though. <laughs> yeah, well, you could have just got lucky. Um, nice sounds of uh, wind chimes, so maybe that means something good. So saying every time you hear a bell, it's an angel getting its wings.
Maybe if you're feeling lucky, Joe's no seven, perhaps you ought to do the uh, the lottery. <laughs> might be um, <laughs> might be your lucky week. <laughs> I hope that's pulling out, or oh, sort of pulling out, that's, uh, that is loose. Halloween, holiday and Christmas. Uh, Christmas I like, Halloween, meh, doesn't, um, we get, um, a lot of people coming around on uh, on Halloween, sort of the uh, trick and treat stuff, and uh, it gets a bit annoying, to be honest. I mean, we're in England, and and of course, trick uh, trick or treat is um, a US um, tradition, shall we say? <laughs> Gonna do something scary for the kids, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna say anything. I am not gonna say anything. Is it the third that goes? It, I think it's got something to do with this thread. I'm not I'm really. I'm not sure. Um, I'm using the same tool as I did the rest of the rest of this locomotive with. I'm not sure, I've got two of these, so I'm not sure if this is the one I used for the previous locomotive. But uh, as, as you rightly noticed there, it's not done it with, with any of the other colours, it's just this blue. So it, I'm not sure whether it's blue <laughs> or whether it's just this particular reel. Maybe just something about this particular reel that's... Um, uh, they, it, it's... Um, when it's been wound, the, when the thread's been wound, and it's a, a two-ply wind as well, it's quite loosely wound, so it's quite fluffy thread. So it, you know, it does catch on things um, quite easily. Does uh, does thread, uh, and some threads do feel thicker than others. The black, for example, feels really thin compared to say this blue. So the, the dyeing process of of the black. Um, Obviously, well, causes the thread either to shrink or in some way um, just not be as fluffy. So yeah, it could have uh, something to do with it. I mean, we we've about gone through about half of this um, this reel. So by the time we finish this locomotive, we will be on another reel. So we'll find out if it's uh, if it's just this colour or um, something else. Photography and watercolour. Oh, yeah. Both, um, both very interesting things. I used to, um, I used to do my own development of black and white. I sort of mainly because colour development was expensive. Um, all the tools to do it, but um, used to enjoy. Uh, you're creating and then uh, developing uh, black and white photographs. Watercolour, though, is something I've not tried yet. <laughs> yeah, you notice the yet in there. Um, I may well try that at some point. It kind of interests me, but it also, I'm kind of a, a detail freak, and watercolour kind of isn't. <laughs> Um, I 
there's a lot to learn with watercolor uh, because of the way in which obviously the paint flow, the water causes the paint to flow i do have a set of watercolor pencils around here some somewhere present on paper so precisely so that i could kind of have a go without um, going into getting all you know brushes and paints and things like that to uh, to do watercolor you already have costumes set out yeah well it's not going to be long before the 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 stores here have, have christmas stuff in it <laughs> I like that digital house party. Uh, I was kind of thinking of having a bit more fun, though. Uh, you know, something like um, an infrared sensor with a with a garden sprinkler that turns on. Um, so anytime the, anybody comes up the drive, it turns the sprinkler on, but not just any sprinkler. I kind of want like a fire hose type sprinkler for something like that. 3D block. Good evening, welcome, and feel free to lurk all you like. Thank you very much for dropping in. I think it's turned into a discussion of how to discourage kids from knocking on your door on Halloween or trick or treat. <laughs> Quite literally, we get about, I think it was about, last, was it last year? The, no, the year before, there was about 50 of them uh, over the evening. It, were, it just got annoying, to be honest. Um, last year we went out, so we weren't in, but... <laughs> yeah, just like that uh, fluffy twig, like, hide upstairs. So this year there may well be no stream on... Uh, Trick or treat night, uh, Halloween, the night before Halloween, isn't it? Either that or maybe maybe a torchlight stream. We don't celebrate Halloween where uh, you live. Oh, okay. We kind of, well, I'm going to say, I don't kind of celebrate Halloween at all. Um, I think it, um, it always used to be a kid's thing, but in the UK, it used to be more Halloween than um, trick or treat. So, you know, you, you would have kids uh, roam, roaming around in like costumes with, uh, you know, um, jack o' lanterns, the, you know, pumpkin lights and things like that and uh, just generally you know hanging out shall we say and that uh, that was you know used to be quite nice and pretty but now that it's got sort of all uh, mercantile shall we say it sort of mm, Mind you, you get some interesting art done uh, around Halloween because, uh, you know, pump pumpkin carving. It's not something I uh, particularly want to try. Um, but, um, you know, people actually carving, not just cutting holes in, in pumpkins, but actually sort of carving the, um, the thickness of the skin so you actually get a shadow uh, or a light, um, light box type effect where Obviously, the thinner the um, the thinner the skin, the uh, the lighter it is. So you get a a shaded image, and some uh, some of the stuff that some people do like that is uh, is quite amazing. <laughs> I 
actually talking of um, well, talking of carving rather than talking of uh, carving pumpkins. We've just been talking today about having some uh, quite large trees cut down around here. So I was thinking about buying a chainsaw, um, a small one, and uh, maybe seeing what I can do in carving, uh, carving up some logs. Just purely for the fun of it, because a small chainsaw isn't particularly expensive. Unfortunately, the uh, the trees are quite that uh, would be cut would be uh, quite uh, contain quite a lot of sap, so they're not uh, they're not great for true uh, true sculpting. But fortunately, it wouldn't be anything I could do on stream. Couldn't get one of those logs in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> and I certainly wouldn't want a chainsaw in the studio. Uh, you can't decide what you should. Uh, oh, the well, the the um, the trick then uh, for you is just toss a dice or something like that, and just go with whatever it says. If you can't, if you can't decide on one. Uh, Actually, 3D blocks in the um, in the stream, so maybe 3D block can offer some um, advice if we can persuade him to come out of his lurk, because um, he's done papercraft. be awesome <laughs> well it might be if I was any good at it <laughs> never done any so we went up to the um, Yorkshire show recently um, and uh, stood and watched they, they do a demonstration there of um, things like lo various logging and things uh, including sort of chainsaw carving simple things like um, so, well, I was going to say like chairs and things like that, but um, I think maybe at some point during the day they did actually have some real sculpting done with a chainsaw, but I never saw it. But uh, it uh, was an interesting, uh, interesting thing to see. Taking a log and turning it into well, it was turning into a child's chair, but. Uh, complete with back seat and little tiny legs. Nice to see the transfer of knowledge. <laughs> Thanks for uh, contributing uh, your experience, 3D block. It 
if you've not um, not seen it for you, the Free Reaper, uh, next time Free is um, streaming and he's taking him a slight uh, rest, get him to show you uh, the Millennium Falcon, um, which is done in uh, papercraft. Of course, if you've already seen it, then that's maybe a bit pointless, but... <laughs> Ah, that would be nice to to to, uh, to see free. If you get a chance to let me know when you're going to do it, please do, and I'll make sure I finish on time rather than overrunning, because I'd like to see it myself. I believe you're working with the heavy stuff tonight, aren't you, I think? I'm sorry, I, you probably want to go back to lurking, but... Uh... It's um, it's kind of uh, well. I'm gonna say it's kind of surprising how long it takes. I'm I'm kind of not surprised, but um, just because I've now, if you like, got used to the fact that um, uh, crafts take well in the past three years since I started doing them. Crafts take uh, longer to uh, to complete than most people think that they do. Um, so I'm kind of not surprised it uh, sort of takes about 10 hours to uh, to complete something like that but it's still um, uh, it still sort of surprises me and I kind of you know understand I mean this will take something at least 10 hours uh, actually possibly closer to uh, about 14 maybe with this one um, but um, it always it always surprises me and the pyrography takes um, you know tens of hours and uh, uh, I'm still surprised by that fact and I, and I do the craft <laughs> Maybe once you've done a little bit of streaming with it, uh, 3D, but perhaps what you ought to do is um, do a sort of a Peppercraft with me series, you know, uh, let everybody who might be interested uh, know what um, what model you're going to do and uh, you know where to get the um, the the, sort of the the template from. And um, then sort of do it Blue Peter style um, on stream, you know, follow along uh, with me, do a, <laughs> a let's play doing um, papercraft. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure how it would stand up. Wouldn't it have to be done with fairly thick, um, fairly thick card to, uh, or is it just so internally braced that it would uh, stand up of its own accord? 
Mind you, I have absolutely no idea what size a life-size battle droid would be. It could well be sort of a foot square for all I know. Uh, go on. I've got. I've got to have a look at what Fear Reapers just uh, suggested. Ah, uh, uh, that's a cool model. I think I would probably personally go. Um, I'll need a bit more experience before I did that. <laughs> Mind you there again, it, it'd be just like me to go, you know what, I'm going to have a go anyway and see how far I get. Okay, that's that section complete. <laughs> Fourteen full pages of pieces. It, it, it's when you start looking through those 14 pages and you find it, it's got uh, it, it starts having pictures of valve gear and um, and pistons in it that you start going maybe this is a bit too complex so there we go yeah just in the center there it's still a bit it's I can see it's a bit um, what I call thin so what I'm just going to do is just turn over at that point there just around there and I'm just going to Punch a few random loops in like that. I think I missed where I wanted to do. Oh yes, I did. It's just. Yeah, it's all all the way across. Let me do a bit more. Oops. I'm trying to get a specific place where I can see a small hole. It's around there. Okay. Ow. So you see, if you, if you haven't quite been uh, with this, you know, I don't have quite done enough in, in one place or something like that, it's not a problem just to go back over and do. There we go, that's filled in a small hole that I could see. Uh, two, and two and a half pages is a bit different. Yeah, that's still a nice, um, still a nice image to do is that one, but whether or not it's a complicated one, I don't know the answer to that. Okay, so right, what I was going to do is because of the uh, well, th this has got a quite a sharp edge on it because it. It literally is a right angle but then then there's a curve from the body onto what would be the top surface of this so what I'm going to do I think is just do some of this light wool just along the edge there 
um, which sort of will reflect, if you like, the fact that it's lighter. And then, but then I'll go into this blue again, uh, up the body. Um, and then um, it's... I may either use this light blue or I may actually go to white uh, just near the top here because of such a, a bright reflection. Same with the black actually. Um, it's such shiny metal, if you like, coloured metal, that um, in sunlight, which is what this is kind of in, um, you get a lot of reflections. Of course, what I could also do is say, you know what, forget reflections, I'm doing it black, or blue in this particular case, and I might just do that as well. Um, but if I do it down here, you you will kind of lose this um, this curve. It'll just disappear if I just uh, sort of continue the blue body straight into it. If I if I really intended to do that, what I should have been thinking about at the start is to make the loops larger uh, or longer rather for this whole section around here, the bottom. Uh, and then I could have made them slightly smaller for all the rest of the locomotive. This would then have stood proud of the surface, and I, I would have could could have used the depth, the difference in depth, to um, to keep this visible when I do the uh, the body. I still kind of could do that, but I, with having already done all these. Um, It'll look a bit untidy if I try and sculpt it in that way, so I'm not going to bother. I'm going to use colour on this one. Um, yeah. Alright, so this is going to be interesting. Right. Thread this. Uh, oh, this is a brand new, uh, brand new reel. I've never used it before. Ow. Not gone through. Go on, thread. You are going to go through. There we go. Off that end. Okay. One, two, set the depth on the needle. Nearly. What I do is a 
at least one maybe two rows of this light blue all the way to about here I'll switch to dark blue underneath underneath and then I'll do uh, some more just across uh, in this sort of area here uh, and then and again this lighter blue so so I create like a, a, a V shape almost and then put this lighter blue back in the middle of the V there and then some darker blue one day here where here where it's in shadow and down underneath the locomotive itself. In fact, I should have continued that black across, so I may well do that later. So I'll start about here. I'm going to do these fairly close to, or well, as close together again as I can. That way I may only need one one row. Beautiful guy, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. I'm not doing too bad, thank you, Eddie Fall Guy. I don't know about the rest of the uh, the rest of chat. Um, a few of them seem to be doing okay. Interesting. This one is um, caught as well. Maybe I'll swap to the other tool for the next stream. Just in case it's this one. Stop there. So let me turn it over. Mm. 
And you can see there's a couple of places like here where it just disappears. I think I'll come back a little bit along there with uh, with this lighter colour. <laughs> oh, I don't find them that bad. I think they're doing a fair bit of programming in them, so... Just noticed some th uh, some loops were pulled out further back, so I missed the fact that uh, the thread jammed. So I'll have to go back in a minute and uh, fill those loops in. And as luck would have it, that's just in the space where they went missing before. OK, thank you for dropping in Digital House Party. Have a good evening and thank you again. Thank you very much for dropping in. So hope to see you again. Yeah, um, Excel's quite a good one for VBA programming. This is probably the better, um, better one of all the uh, the office products for uh, for programming in other than Access. If you actually want something database related, but uh, hmm. I don't know. It's not. Uh, it's not too bad. It's it's half object orientated. Um, Going to, that's not going to be bad. Um, it's sort of half object orientated in that, of course, you've got the visual uh, the visual interface, and um, uh, some of the other things like inheritance don't work very well. But um, I don't know. I've I've seen worse things uh, to program in, and uh, I guess seen better ones as well. But sometimes that's all you, you you've got to work with what you've got. Like at work, I don't have access to more complex um, programming tools than VBA. Okay, I'm gonna do across the top here. I'm, I am, or I'm protecting. Good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Right, so I've got a white, yeah, black-white transition. 
We'll do a black blue. The um, the only time I found it unreliable is when it, you're trying to do something that you shouldn't do, like um, multi-user access using a shared drive. Um, whilst it um, whilst it kind of supports it, it kind of doesn't. <laughs> Any time I've found it doing anything weird, it's actually turned out to be me, uh, my programming. I'm protecting. Thank you very much for following the uh, studio there. Um, sorry, I'm looking a bit puzzled because I heard the music but didn't see the graphic. Um, which should have uh, should have come up at the same time. But thank you very much for following. I do appreciate you doing that. Never had that at, at all, uh, Fear Reaper. And I've done some fairly hefty hefty work in it. Um, to turnkey type applications. The, um, and accessing big databases as well, SQL Server databases from it. In fact, the, the only time I ever have a problem with it is actually working with SharePoint, which is another Microsoft technology, um, which it's, it's not specifically um, Access's problem, it's more SharePoint's problem. Because of the way it um, way access is forced to uh, to connect with it. Oh, mm. uh, what uh, what you might have had a problem with there. Then uh, fear reaper. Um, it's a, it is a it is a problem with all the uh, VBA programming stuff in uh, uh, Microsoft stuff is if you have associated libraries DLLs or whatever you want to call them uh, in um, in VBA I found I found what the exact term is. Uh, if you run the access program or Excel for that matter on a on a computer that's got a um, newer version of whatever that library element is then access will be you know and Excel for that matter will very kindly up update the reference to the library to the new one for you but if you run it on a on a uh, computer, then you take that version that's it's done that too, and run it on a um, comp uh, a computer that has a not quite so newer version, or whatever the library is. Windows doesn't downgrade it; it just says it's not there, it's missing, and um, you have to manually go in and uh, reattach the libraries which is a bit of a pain in the neck to do. You can code around the problem, um, but uh, and that's ultimately the way I end up doing it, just so that I don't have to keep doing, you know, doing that, going in and telling people how to change versions.
Okay, I think that blue will probably be enough. Let's have a look. What it looks like on the other side. Yeah, that'll do. So now put the uh, this blue back into this space here, and then we'll put dark blue in around here. And that, and then there'll be possibly some white, I think, just going up here. Um, not quite sure about the roof, but we'll come back to that. Yeah, well, I say horses for courses. Sometimes you have no choice. to the blue. Oops, needle thread it. Oh, I don't know. Things like uh, Cobol, Fortran. Uh, could be quite interesting trying to uh, program in these days, modern uh, modern programming these days in those languages. It's a long time since I've done any of those, but... <laughs> Not fantastically easy. Uh, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat in that the the thing that the the buffer or the well part of the buffer is behind it here is also in blue. Um, but if I do it the same blue, it won't be seen, um, even though it is the same blue. What I'm going to do is cheat and do it in the darker blue. Uh, and over this side, I'm going to do it in the lighter blue, because <laughs> that that bit round there is in dark blue as well with it. Excuse me, being shaded. Um. Transactional SQL? No. Uh, well, I, I I use that quite a bit, so. Um, that's true, they do, because of course there's still stuff out there written in it that um, nobody else knows how to maintain. But transactional SQL, they do a lot in transactional SQL. Especially if you do, if you're doing something like, um, you know, uh, it, it's a useful thing if you, um, got something like uh, Microsoft Access linking to it, so doing stored procedures. And there's different flavours of transactional SQL anyway. Whether you're talking about um, sort of the, some of the Microsoft flavors or some of the um, um, I've forgotten who the other one is that I was just thinking of then. No, it's gone. Never mind. You can get to do some quite powerful things.
Oh, well, of course, the <laughs> the the thing though about um, SQL is that um, you can optimize it, um, but the idea is that the transactional engine does the optimization for you. Midge PV, thank you very much for following the stream. That is most kind of you. Um, if you ever look at um, how the um, the optimizer changes your um, or looks at how it how it accesses the um, the tables and indexes and things, you'd be quite surprised just how much it uh, it it does optimize uh, stuff. Um, and then then you start, especially if you're using quite complex stored procedures or, or queries. How, if you rewrite it, you can completely change how the optimizer works, and um, and then go from there. Uh, true, it won't. Uh, it will advise you. Well, they they will advise you if you're missing an index, or uh, a lot of them will. Certainly, the SQL Server does, and uh, the other one that I can't remember the name of. Um, if you if you choose to ask it, and if you look at the um, the execution plans. You can you can definitely see where it would be um, extremely useful to have an index, even if it's only a temporary index for the um, uh, for the transaction. Um, but uh, concurrency couldn't tell you. Don't do a lot of concurrency stuff. Con concurrency stuff with databases is. Um, can be really challenging, especially if you're writing um, stuff that you know there's going to be two or more processes doing exactly the same thing at the same time. When you have to start getting into um, atomic transactions and things like that. But at this point, um, half the stream has got no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, uh, deadlocks and uh, and race uh, conditions and uh, uh, re reading um, reading cache data rather than reading live data and reading reading stuff where there's a transaction in process. Yeah, deadlocks are the um, the worst bit. Deadlocks, by the way, if anybody's really interested is where two things try and update the same thing at the same time and what happens is uh, they both both things that are trying to do the update stop and wait for the other one to finish first and of course they never do because they're both waiting on each other that's a deadlock and um, it's, a, it's something that you really 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 want to avoid in databases
Yeah, I'll sometimes both of them, and you never guarantee which one it is. Um, and uh, then you've got to recover from that, and it's um, it proves interesting uh, for you, but it proves interesting. <laughs> and you didn't expect that fear reaper <laughs> you start talking about transactional sequel you don't think the chat's going to go quiet <laughs> oh dear blazing chicken 11 hello good evening <laughs> so we've got uh we've got that there and you can see you can see now we've got the edge which which helps you see uh, the corner, if you like, which is, which if in real life would be a reflection, or, or sort of a light, you know, the light shining off the edge, so you can actually see it. So what I'm going to do is do do some dark blue down here, which starts to finish off the outside of the engine before we do any sort of you know background. So dark blue down here. I've got a bit of dark blue to do up here. Um, before we come on to black and blue for the uh, for the main body. So although I probably want to use this again somewhere up here, it actually doesn't look as bad as I thought it might. It's sort of, 
it looks a, looks about the right sort of colour. Um, I'm going to change this one out for the dark blue. What train is this? Uh, specifically, it's uh, the Mallard, which is um, an A4 Pacific locomo steam locomotive. Uh, to give it a bit more detail in the 462 configuration. But it's, um, it's specifically the Mallard, which is the engine which holds the land speed record for steam at 100, well, debatable at either 125 or 126 miles per hour. And that was drawing um, a heavy set of carriages as well. Um, if you mean whilst I'm streaming, um, I, I do five different things whilst I'm streaming. And that is, um, we do this which is called punch craft, uh, relief carving, uh, which is uh, sort of dry, uh, dry, well, carving from a single solid piece of wood to create a something which stands off a background. Scraper board which is um, basically a black surface which we scratch with sharp tools to create an image. Um, carving, scraper board, punch craft. I've forgotten one. Carving, scraper board. I do five things, carving, scraper board, punch craft. Pyrography, thank you, I was reminded. Pyrography and uh, then jewellery making or chain mail jewellery making. What do I make? Yeah. Yeah, these sorts of uh, these sorts of things. Um, it really depends on what I what I happen to feel like making. Um, so. That's an example of uh, biography. And that's an example of the uh, of the carving. Um, the others are sort of tucked away, so I'm not going to get uh, get those out at the moment. And, uh, and this which is punch craft. Uh, yes, I've threaded this needle. So. <laughs> well, the pyrography is quite hot actually, but um, thank you. thread off because it's getting in my way. There we go. Mm -hmm. 
Let's go daily four guy. Ow. So what was it? Uh, what was it that you'd done this time? Blazing Chicken 11, thank you very much for following, that's most kind of you. And thank you for testing the graphic works. <laughs> Was that silver as in silver colour or silver as in sterling, um, Eddie? One of these days I'm going to try making something in sterling silver. Okay, silver colour. Uh, no, I don't. Oops, one more thread. So For those of you who might not uh, know what uh, a Byzantine uh, is, I uh, just happen to have one here, which I'll uh, show you. Now this is a bracelet, but um, we move a light, so you can actually see this a bit better. Excuse the bloom on the other one. But this is, um, oh, now of course the focus is off, isn't it? There we go. Come on, focus, there we go. Still isn't quite focused properly. These cameras sometimes. There we go. That's better. That's a by. This is a Byzantine net uh, weave, done in when in sort of chain mail or jewelry, which is what um, Eddie Fall guy there does. Uh, it's this sort of um, this sort of pattern of uh, sort of rings folded back on themselves. The, um, it sounds like Aegis done it in just all silver colour. Um, this one is uh, actually yellow and uh, uh, well a lilac or a, um, sort of colour. It's a really pale lilac colour in this particular case. And you do get uh, you do get other ones. <laughs> you can get a bit more bold sometimes. <laughs> 
like blue and, and yellow and you can see the Byzantine uh, a little bit better in this one than you can on the other because of the contrast. So the, so the Byzantine refers to the to sort of a, a block of six. There we go. And they look and look really nice. Right. Let me just put that back out of the way. Then it's uh, it's not affecting this cam camera in front of me. Uh, I bet that looks nice, the two together. So one thing about that, uh, those um, those rings is they don't, they really sparkle. And uh, now I'm going to refocus the camera uh, and zoom it out a little bit. Turn that off as well. So I've just done it. It's, it, it's, it's subtle, uh, but it's enough in, in real life. The cam This camera, ha well, all of these particular cameras, which are a Logitech 920, have a funny relationship with sort of blue purple <laughs> in that they don't necessarily represent the color properly um, purple they have a habit of making look blue and blue shades don't always show up so well um, but in in real life here there's a there's a patch of darker blue here and there's uh, a, a patch of darker blue here where this sort of silver disc of the buffer joins to the main body of the engine it's sort of showing up, maybe a bit more light, might actually help the camera. You can sort of see it a little bit there, but not not greatly very well. Um, but it, but it here in, in real life, it sort of shows up as like a shaded version of this colour, which um, is what is the effect that I was after. So it kind of shows it curling around and underneath. Let's get that light out of my face there. Um, so, but the um, so we've got uh, quite a large bit of the side done there. I uh, have a little bit more blue to do under here and dark blue to do around this side, which is the same the same bit on the other side of the engine, which I'll do before we uh, come up and do the uh, the top end and back into the tender at this uh, this end here. Um, but that's it for tonight. Um, we're now 10 o'clock and uh, it's a convenient place to stop having just finished off that uh, that particular piece so I want to say thank you everybody who's watching it has been great fun having you around watching me do artwork if there's anybody who is watching that isn't following I would of course encourage you to follow me uh, that way you know theory twitch will uh, notify you when I go live so you'll be able to see me uh, tomorrow night and on subsequent streams on the other hand, if you just like the notification, then you can follow me on Twitter. I tweet when I go live. I don't want to have my tea. So you know, all the tweets are um, art-related or stream-related, if uh, I send any. Details will be on the end plate in a moment. They're also below the stream window, and it's at Zaragan Art. On the other hand, if you just want to try and catch me tomorrow, I start streaming from approximately 8pm uh, British summer time which is 1900 hours GMT, or is two hours ago in whatever time zone that you are currently in. So 
If you just look at your clock, subtract two hours, that would have been eight o'clock in the UK. So approximately eight o'clock every night is, is when I start streaming. Hope to see you all again on a future stream. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.